G'day guys, and today I just want to make a quick little video having a jab at YouTube. Now what YouTube has done, as I'm sure you're aware if you're uploading content, is it claims that in the face of coronavirus or COVID-19, it will be no longer able to or less able to police the content that gets uploaded to its platform. So I'll read you what they actually say when you go to upload a video, just in case you're not aware. So they say, due to COVID-19, we will conduct fewer human reviews to protect the health of our extended workforce. Unfortunately, as a result, we may remove content that does not violate our community standards. So obviously, in my mind, the, uh, the slack will be taken up by the bots. Now, what do we know about the bots on YouTube? And uh, well, this may apply to any other tech site. Bots don't really understand sarcasm and they're notorious for flagging things that, again, do not necessarily violate the community standards. Now, when we look at something like this, when we claim that YouTube, as an extension of Google, is claiming that it is unable to provide the support it needs, uh, it can't get its workforce working from home, this, uh, this reeks of bullshit to me, essentially, because this is Google, one of the largest tech companies in the world, if not you know, the largest. I'm not an expert on that. And you're telling me they, out of all the companies in the world, can't design an app or some kind of application or some video chat service, something like that, to get their workforce working from home, Whereas, again, I imagine all this content policing is done online, you know, done on a computer. Somehow they can't extend this to their workforce at home. It just, again, reeks of uh, bullshit. And again, the reason why I think this is because when these uh, lockdowns and things began happening in Australia, I was hearing on the radio, uh, a lot of companies, you know, changing to the response in the marketplace were saying, look, you can still, uh, say, for example, the kitchen renovators up near me, they were saying, look, we're still open, you can do virtual online tours of our kitchens and that, you can still browse our products online, we can still actually come renovate your kitchen, you know, we're just social distancing and all this thing. So if a smaller company like that can find a way to keep their business afloat and still deliver the same service, I really do struggle to see how YouTube will be struggling to um, essentially get its employees to the workplace. I mean, good on them for wanting to protect their employees and that such, but I believe they're using COVID-19 as essentially a cover to more thoroughly curate, police, and censor their site. Because I think what YouTube is trying to do is create a more family-friendly air on their platform. They don't necessarily want that edgy content that made YouTube so great to begin with. That's what pulled me to YouTube in the first place. When I was younger, uh, I think the big thing that got me on the platform, the you know the edgy stuff at the time that was circulating around school was Ray William Johnson. Now, what did Ray William Johnson post? Well, he did viral videos from YouTube. So that got you a good idea of what was popular on YouTube at the time, and it was very edgy stuff, you know, Fenton, and uh, it's just the, the type of stuff that's so dumb, it just evacuates from your brain. But this dumb and edgy stuff uh, is what drew me to the platform and what was considered popular and interesting at the time, because, you know, there were viral videos. But now this sort of thing um, is not, uh, it's not, you know, outright banned, but it's certainly not a not uh, not celebrated as much on YouTube as it was before. So if you go into the trending tab, as we've seen before, it's carefully created with G-rated content. I was talking before about how one of Tommy Robinson's videos got you know a million or many millions of views in a, in a short period of time, a few days, and yet it wasn't trending, whereas there were videos with only hundreds of thousands of views from two weeks ago, and they were considered trending. So it's very obvious that YouTube is creating its site in an attempt to create a family-friendly sort of G-rated atmosphere. All those trending videos they're not edgy. They're not edgy. They're from uh, carefully created content creators who will not, you know, they're not going to swear, they're not going to say fuck, they're not going to say anything uh, too edgy. And unfortunately, that's uh, not what made YouTube great in the first place. Now, the reason why they may be wanting to create this uh, G-rated sort of atmosphere, to me, it's fiscal. They just want to, um, they want advertisers to stay on the platform because I believe that's how YouTube makes money. They take a cut of the ads and this sort of thing. Although, it does bear in mind uh, that it is 2020, which means that it's election season in the United States. So there may be people, and usually when I look at, you know, what's going on with censorship and uh, things like this online, I do take the stance that most of it is just simply ignorance. Most people are ignorant, I believe. I believe there are very few malevolent people in the world, but looking at the fact that it is 2020 and YouTube loves to censor, and it seems that, you know, the elites of society, the bourgeois, so to speak, did not expect the uh, the little guys to have so much of a say in the 2016 election and say, you look, we're, we're going to have more content taken down that may not necessarily violate a community standards. It seems like the perfect cover to go about censoring independent content creators who may, you know, root for the wrong guy, essentially Trump. 
or even if they're not rooting for Trump, not necessarily saying good things about the Democrats and this sort of thing. Because we know that Silicon Valley, YouTube, any sort of big company does tend to become more liberal over time. And we can't pretend that YouTube is anything but a left-leaning company. So whilst the, um, whilst the cleanup of YouTube that may take place over the coming months during this COVID-19 pandemic may be fiscally oriented in some sense, they want to clean up the site in order to uh, keep advertisers on the platform because they get spooked by AG content, it may be in fact be political also in nature because again, they want to influence the, 20, um, the 2020 election. And again, it's all just projection when you know, play, things like this talk about you know, Russia, Russia, Russia. And so, well, they don't, actually, they don't talk about that so much anymore because it's, uh, it was proven to be not true and there was no uh, foundation to it whatsoever, which we knew all along. But again, um, soccer mum America, soccer mum Australia, soccer mum Western world needs to be told that from the mainstream media, otherwise they don't believe it. So they drop that conspiracy theory pretty quickly. But again, it's very funny to hear them talk about election interference when they're pulling this sort of thing that we're seeing today. So this is just something that uh, I think bears well to keep in mind over the coming months. Uh, opportunism in the age of coronavirus, not just extending to you know localized price, price gouging as I've talked about before, but it also extends into the world of big tech and uh, inevitably um, politics, which we will perhaps touch on another time. So again, as always, stay safe, so well, make sure you eat your onions and your garlic, keep exercising, get some sunshine. Even if you're locked inside, that's no excuse to stop exercising. The floor is free. Hope you all have a good one and take care.